war that took 116 years is called the Hundred Years' War? Welcome to Moments in Minutes. To make a long story short, uh, the reason why the Hundred Years' War is referred to as the Hundred Years' War is because French historians in the 19th century referred to it in this particular way, in this particular perspective, and the trend has continued ever since. Spanning a period of 116 years, between 1337 and 1453, the Hundred Years' War was a series of conflicts between England and France. The war itself consists of four main periods of conflict. The first was the Edwardian War, between Edward III of England and Philip VI of France between 1337 and 1360. The second was a war of French reprisal, known as the Caroline War, between 1369 and 1389. The third was known as the Piracy War, because it was a series of naval and coastal battles that followed the ascension of Henry IV of England. And the fourth and last was a series of conflicts known as the Lancastrian War, that was fought in France between 1415 and 1453. This final phase included the retreat of the English, after they were forced to surrender all of their French possessions, except for Calais. The war produced some of the greatest battles in military history, including Agincourt, Cressy, and the Siege of Orleans, which gave the world the legend of Joan of Arc. While the English won most of the battles in the Hundred Years' War, they lost the entire war for three main reasons. Number one, no English king became the king of France. Number two, the English never forced the French into surrender. And three, the English were never able to maintain the lands and territories that they had conquered. Despite what you might think, the Hundred Years War has a lot of significance for the modern day world. The war saw the formation of the first permanent national taxes. Both England and France devised tax systems and financial devices that raised a huge amount of money in a very short period of time. And these have formed the basis of many of our current taxation systems. The brutal nature of the conflicts in the Hundred Years' War led to the formation of the first professional standing armies since the Roman Empire. These standing armies were the first professional armies to employ commoners on the battlefield. And this development mirrors many of the professional armies of the world today, where people from all walks of life are employed in national military forces. The war also produced the first real outpourings of national sentiment. While villages and family groups were the extent of one's loyalties in medieval society, the war inspired the first development of nationalism. And this is a concept that continues to inform our identities and our relationships with other nations. The most important outcome of the war, however, was the development of the centralized nation state. While European society had been based on feudalism, a society based on landholders and those who worked the land, the manpower shortages caused by the Hundred Years' War quickly brought this system to an end. With the rise of the centralized nation state also came the development of modern politics. Represented assemblies gained strength from their diplomatic efforts in the conflicts, which led to the first professional diplomatic officers in international relations. Thank you so much for your time today. Moments and Minutes is a channel dedicated to making history more accessible to you, the modern day scholar. We give you the what and the how, but more importantly, the why of history why it matters, and why it's important to you. Please subscribe to Moments and Minutes, where we create history every week.